In this video we're going to have a look at how we can compare two objects using the double equal sign operator and is. So in this video we're going to take a look at what kind of result we get when we use this and also when we use this in a Python program. Let's consider this snippet of code. If we look at the first line, what we can see we're doing, we're creating a list. And if you look at the list, you can see it is prime numbers up to 11. And I'm binding that list to this name here, primes underscore 1. You can see on this line, I'm taking the name that's bound to this list here, and I'm assigning it to this name. And what we need to ask ourselves, what exactly does this do? To help answer this question, I'm going to look to a schematic animation. And the first thing I'm going to show is this. And this is an object, and the object, as you can see, contains a list. And indeed, it contains a list that has all the prime numbers up to 11. In other words, you can see that this list here appearing in the object is what I have here in the code. And consequently, if we were to ask ourselves, well, how do I gain access to this object? Well, you do so via this name here. And if you remember from videos earlier in the playlist on Python, you'll remember that what we have when we create an object of some kind is we have a name that's going to be bound to that object. And the name here you can see is prime underscore one. And I like to go with the notion that this will have a pointer, which I'm representing with this arrow, that will point to the object. Consequently, the name is bound to the object. So what we can see here is that this line has given us the arrangement you can see in the schematic diagram where this is the name that's bound to this object. What happens on this line is the name here is assigned to this new name and consequently we can see that we're going to get this new name here. Now what is given to it? Well the answer is this arrow here is copied to primes2 as you can see primes underscore 2 and this primes underscore 2 is now bound to the same object. So what this program snippet has done, this line has created the object and this line has arranged for two names to be bound to the same object and that's the key. These two names are bound to the same object. It might be useful to draw an analogy here. Let's have a look at the schematic diagram we've just considered for the program snippet we've already looked at. And you can see we have an object that has this content. And we can see we have two names bound to the same object. This is rather like having an individual that I'm showing here whose name is Rebecca. And we would represent that person with the name Rebecca. And of course, we could say that Rebecca is bound. The name Rebecca is bound to the individual Rebecca. But of course, Rebecca could also have a nickname. And the nickname for Rebecca can typically be Becky. And Becky is now bound, and is bound to the same person. Becky is bound to Rebecca. Now this means that this individual, which you can think of as an individual object, has two names, Rebecca and Becky. This is an individual object, and it has two names, prime underscore one and prime underscore two. Now if you consider this snippet of code, you can see these two lines are exactly the same as the two lines we've looked at already in this video. But here you can see I've added two additional lines and they are going to print the ID of primes underscore one and they're going to print the ID of primes underscore two. And if you remember from earlier work, the ID is the unique identifier for objects in Python. And in C Python, they actually are the address of where the object will be stored in the computer's memory. So what we know we're going to get with these two lines here is the following schematic diagram where we can see we just have the one object and two names are bound to that object. So what's this going to do and what's this going to do? Well let's have a look at the runtime for this program and you can see it is here. And this line has been responsible for outputting this ID and of course this is the ID of this object and this is the ID of this object. 
And if you look at the IDs, you can see they're identical. Well, they should be, because what we've got, as the schematic diagram is showing us, we've got just the one object. And both of these names are bound to the same object. Consequently, when we find ourselves printing the ID of both, we can see the same ID is given because both these names are bound to the same object because they're pointing to the same object. Let's now consider this snippet of code. Well, this line is identical to the line in the last snippet of code, and we know when this line executes, we're going to get an object of the prime numbers up to 11, and the name primes underscore one is actually going to point to that object, so primes underscore one will be said to be bound to the object. Now, this line of the code is different from the line of the code we saw in the last snippet in this video, so let's Let's consider what's happening here. Well, we can see I'm using this function and I'm passing to this function this, which is the list. It's the list that you can see here. And of course, I'm representing that list as an object. And this is the content of the list here. It's all of the prime numbers up to 11. But what this function will do, it'll take this list in and it'll create another list with the same content, it has to be said, the content that's passed in, which are the prime numbers from 2 through to 11. And it's going to assign this new list to this name prime underscore two so prime underscore two will now be the name that's bound to this new list and we can show that schematically as shown here now there is the new object and to this object we're going to have the name primes underscore two bound so prime underscore two will have a pointer an address that will bind it to this object so this is the address of this object, and this line is showing that they are bound, i.e. prime underscore two is bound to this object. And what we now can see is we have two objects. They both happen to have the same content in this case, but they are most definitely separate objects. So we could draw an analogy here, it might help. If we can look at the schematic diagram we've got, the last snippet of code give us two objects, which just happen to have the same content in this case, and each object is pointed to by a different name. So this one is bound to this object, and this name is bound to this object. And this is rather like us going back to the individual Rebecca again, and say that the name Rebecca is bound to the instance of a human being, which happens to be called Rebecca. And of course, let's say Rebecca has a twin, and this is the twin. And we give that twin obviously, a different name, and the name we're going to give the twin is Kara, and Kara will be now the name bound to the twin. But what we can see, we have two objects that are identical, and they have different names. This is different than what we had before. If you remember before, we just had the one individual who was known by Rebecca and Becky. But here, we've got two distinct humans known by different names. Whereas here, we've got two distinct objects bound to different names. Let's now consider this snippet of code, and you can see here I have the two program statements that I've just been discussing. I'm printing the ID of each of the objects that have been created. Here I'm printing the ID of primes underscore one, and here I'm printing the ID of primes underscore two. And if we look to the schematic diagram, we know that this line is going to give us the following relationship where we have primes underscore one bound to this object. This line, well, that's going to give us an identical copy of the object in the sense that it too also has prime numbers from two through to 11. But of course, the relationship now between the name primes underscore two and this new object is shown here. We can see that it's bound. Now we have, as I am repeating, two different objects. So here, when I print the ID of this object, what do you think will happen when you compare that to the printing the ID of this different object? Well, they should be different, shouldn't they? So let's have a look at the output. And you can see here that this was the output resulting from this program statement, and this 
is the output resulting from this program statement and you can see indeed they are different let's consider this program snippet and if we look to these two lines we've looked at these before right at the beginning of this video and we know the schematic diagram to represent these two lines is this one here where we have an instance of the list class that has this content and you can see that that content is shown here in the code and we have two names bound to to the same object when I come on to this line I'm going to print what is returned from this now what this is asking it's asking is prime underscore one does it have the same content as prime underscore two well, what do you think well because it's the same object they're going to have the same content aren't they because this one points to this which has this as its content and this one points to the same object which has this so they're going to have the same content where that content is the prime numbers from 2 through to 11 so what's this doing well this is asking is prime underscore 1 is it the same as prime underscore 2 in other words this is asking are they the same object is this the same object as this not if the content is the same but is it the same object well it is isn't it look at the schematic diagram it is the same object consequently this will also return true so if we look to the runtime of this program we can see it here and we can see that the output from this is true because prime underscore one and prime underscore two are pointing to the same object therefore they share the same content because the same object will have the same content which in this case are the prime numbers from two through to eleven and this is true because this line is asking is prime underscore one the same object as prime underscore two well the schematic diagram is clearly showing us that it is the same object you might find it useful to refer to the analogy here and you can see that I've drawn the analogy up here where we have an individual and this individual is known by Rebecca and Becky and what this line would effectively be doing is asking is Rebecca's content the same as Becky's content well Rebecca this is her content and Becky this is a content identical because it's the same person and this line of course would be asking is Rebecca the same person Person as Becky and the answer is yes it is let's now consider the following snippet of code and you can see that we have these two lines here and the first line of course is going to create a list that has the prime numbers from 2 to 11 and on this line here this is creating a new list from the primes underscore one list and assigning that new list to primes underscore two so primes underscore two now has its own list that just happens to have the same content as the list that this name is bound to and schematically we can see that appearing here now we have to ask what kind of question is this asking here is prime underscore one's content the same as the content of prime underscore two well let's go and look at the schematic diagram this is the content of prime underscore one and this is the content of prime underscore two and if you compare the content you can see they are the same consequently this will return true it'll give us true and of course this will then print to the output if we now come on to this line what's happening here well this is asking is prime underscore one is it the same object as prime underscore underscore two well let's go and have a look at the schematic diagram prime underscore one is this object and prime underscore two is this object now the fact that both of the objects have the same content is not what is being looked at here what's being looked at is whether this is pointing to the same object as this one and we can clearly see from the diagram that it is not so what this will return is false so if we look to the output for this snippet of code we we can see we get this and this is showing us that this is true and this is false if you want to draw the analogy again you've got this relationship and what this line is really asking is the content of Rebecca and Cara the same well they're identical so the answer is yes true and this is asking is Rebecca the same as Cara is it the same person and the answer is no because Rebecca and Cara are in effect from a programming perspective different objects 
So to conclude this video, if you see this, it gives true if both objects referred to have the same content, whereas this gives true if both the objects referred to are the same object. So my recommendation for you going forward is this. Try and avoid thinking of a variable in Python as a box into which a value is stored. Think of a variable in Python differently. When you're dealing with Python, you have names that are bound to instances of classes. And there is a distinction between the name and the object that it points to. The name is bound to the object. Now, of course, the object will have content and that content can be many different things it could be an integer it could be a list it could be a dictionary but the relationship you should have going forward is in Python names are bound to instances of classes in other words names are bound to objects check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video